Hello, my pretties. What's up? It's the Lion Queen here. Welcome to episode 317 of Shadows and Pretties. And today we're going to be looking at this 1984 fantasy film, which is called, well, The Never Ending Story, which is based on the Never Ending Story novel that came out in 1979 by, well, Michael Endy. So, um... The film, the book is pretty different, so I will go with, you know, what are the differences between the book and the movie in a little bit. But let me get on with what the plot of this movie is about, you know, in case if you guys haven't watched the movie in, like, years, or for those who have not seen it, and for those who want a refresher. So, with that being said, the plot basically involves a 10-year-old best in books who is a shy outcast who lives with his recently widowed father. One morning, the Bastion's father tells his son of his concern of hearing the, hearing that he drew unicorns in his math book. Tells by Bastion that he needs to stop fantasizing and start facing reality. However, on his way to school, Bastion is chased by bullies, but escapes by hiding in a bookstore. An annoying bookseller named Mr. Coralender Bastin's interest in books asks him to read about the Corander he's reading, but the bookseller advises reading against it, saying it was just not a safe story like the regular books. But his curiosity piped, so Bastin secretly takes the book titled The Never-Ending Story, leaving a note promising to return it. Arriving at school late, Bastin hides in the building in the attic dig to read. So the book pretty much describes the fantasy world of Fantasia, slowly being devoured by a male violent force called the Nothing. The childlike empress who rules Fantasia has fallen ill, where the young warrior Archero is asked to discover a cure. Believing once the empress is well, the Nothing will no longer be a threat. Archero is again given a medallion called the Aran, which is a guide that protects him on the quest. So as Aaron sets Turo sets out, the Nothing summons a vicious and highly intelligent wolf-like creature named Gmork and sends him to kill Arturo. Arturo's quest directs him to a giant turtle doll-like advisor, Morla the Ancient One, in one of the swamps of sadness. Although Arun protects Arturo, his beloved horse Artax, unfortunately, is lost to the swamp, and he continues alone. Morla won't help Archero because of her allergies to young people and empathy, but she does not have the answers that he seeks, and she instead directs Archero to the Southern Oracle. 10,000 miles distant before going back to the internal sleep, Gamork closes Archero and succumbs to exhaustion while trying to escape the swamps, but is narrowly saved by a luck dragon by a dragon named Falkor. Falkor then takes him to the home of the two gnomes who live underneath the gates of the Sovereign or article, Oracle or whatever. Archer then crosses the first gate, but is perplexed when the second gate, a mirror that shows the viewer's true self, reveals a boy which Bastin is shocked to recognize as himself. Archer eventually meets the Sovereign Oracle, who tells them that the only way to save the Empress is to find a human child who lives beyond the boundaries of Fantasia, to give her a new name. Bastin comments that he would name the Empress after his late mother. Atro and Falkor flee as the Nothing becomes the Sovereign, consumes the Sovereign Oracle. So in the fight, Atro is then knocked from Falkor's back into the sea of possibilities by the Nothing. Losing Atro in the process, he wakes on the shore to find some abandoned ruins, where he finds several murals, murals depicting on his adventure. One including of Glamorc, then reveals himself and explains that Fantasia represents humanity's imagination, and thus without boundaries. While the nothing manifestation is lost of hopes and dreams, Arthur then battles and kills Glamorc, and then the nothing become, consumes the ruins. Falkior manages to retrieve the Aran and rescue Arato, and the two find themselves in the void with only a small fragments of Fantasia rem remaining fearing that they have failed, until they spot the Empress's ivory tower amongst the fragments. Inside, Aratu apologizes for the following Empress, but she assures him that he has succeeded in bringing back another human child, 
who has been following his quest, Bastian. She then explains that just as Bastian is following the Archer story, others are following Bastian's, pretty much, making this part of the never-ending story. As the nothing begins to consume the tower, the Empress explains that Bastian must call out her new name to save Fantasia. Disbelieving that she had been incorporated with the story, and remembering his father's words, he denies these events that are actually happening and gives after she pleads him directly to call out her new name, running on the window of the attic, call out Moonchild. Bastian awakens with the Empress, who represents him with the Grand of Sand, a soul remaineth of Fantasia. The Empress then tells Bastian that he has the power to bring Fantasia back with his imagination. Bastian recreates Fantasia and then flies on with Falkyor's back to the land and as the inhabitants are restored, including Aritu and Artax. When Falkyor asks what his next wish will be, Bastian brings Falkyor to the real world to chase down the school bullies. The film narrates that Bastian had many more wishes and more adventures, but it's another story. That's just pretty much how the movie ends. I personally really thought this was a really good movie. It it was such a really awesome movie. It's quite emotional at parts of the movie too, because I do know, you know, that there is like, you know, some soundtracks that, you know, it's kind of sad. I mean, there was parts of the movie that was pretty sad, but honestly, I personally really liked the film. I thought it was, you know, a really great movie. It's, I mean, you know, if you've watched it, this movie before, you you probably remember being a kid and having this on VHS. Now, there is a second film called The Never-Ending Story, The Next Chapter, which I will consider, you know, reviewing that one in the near future, which will be a movie I'll look into while, while reviewing the next episode, as well as The Never-Ending Story, Free Escape from Fantasia, which, of course, I will look into doing that one as well, but... Right now, I'm just going to focus on the first one. Now, there is a book based on it that came out in 1979. And pretty much, pretty much the boy Bastian Barilax Bucks is overweight and an imaginative child. So pretty much he was neglected after the death of his mother. And of course, Bastian bursts into the antiquarian bookstore as always, where he finds the handbook called The Never-Ending Story. So basically, the plot of the book is pretty much the same. Like, it's pretty much the same as the original, although there might be some, you know, stuff that, you know, that was not in the, in the movie that was in the book. But in all due reality, I thought the characters were pretty good. I liked the characters of the move, first movie, I personally really like, you know, this movie, The Never-Ending Story. It's emotional, yes, but I personally really like the movie. I thought it was well made in detail. I like the Falkyar Dragon character, which I thought he was pretty cool. I really like the voice acting, and I mean, the actors did, like, a really great job in the movie. It's such a great story. I mean, it's... He's sad at certain parts, but it's still a really good film. I mean, if you were a kid, you definitely would really enjoy this movie. Even as an adult, I mean, I watch, I've watched this when I was a kid, like, years ago. It, while it is a good movie, it is kind of depressing at certain parts. But I say, you know, if you're a huge fan of, you know, this movie, you definitely have to really watch this movie. This is a really great film. Even though this came out in the 80s, it was still a really enjoyable film. It's still really enjoyable. I still, I could watch this movie, you know, over and over again and it would be that good. So, like I always say, I will look into maybe doing the sequels in the future if I ever get the opportunity. But right now, that's just going to be for the next videos videos of shadows and praise in the future but yeah that's pretty much all i really have to say but like i always say this is just simply my own personal opinion and if you happen to dis disagree with me that is perfectly fine too we're all entitled to our own opinions regards to these well movies this is just simply my own personal thoughts 
I personally really have to say if you were if you're a kid you definitely really have to watch this movie even if you well if you were a kid in the 80s or 90s I'm sure everybody has watched this movie I've never met a person who's never seen the film I mean everybody pretty much has it's such an amazing Zen film it's a it's got you know some dark parts of the movie but I still personally really enjoy the film and I mean if you guys have not seen this movie, you really have to watch this film. This is like one of the best films of the 80s that I've ever seen. It's such a great film. It's well made. It's just a really enjoyable movie to watch. I mean, if you feel nostalgic from, you know, 80s nostalgic and you want to relive something from the 80s, then I definitely recommend this movie. It's such a good film. It's well made. I personally really enjoy it. So... With that being the case and with that being said, I'm going to sit here and say right now that, you know, if you dis disagree with my opinion, like if you don't like this movie while me while I do, that's perfectly fine. If you like this movie, that's perfectly fine too because I'm all open to hear your opinions on this film. So, I guess with that being said and that being the case, what did you guys personally think of this movie? Did you enjoy it? Did you not? Also, what would you have done personally to help make the movie a lot better? Feel free to let me know what your thoughts are down in the comments below. I'm the Lion Queen. I want to thank you so much for watching today's video. And if you're new to my channel, be sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe if you're new. Ring the bell for notifications to when I upload so that way you guys will not miss an upload. As always, if you're interested in following my DeviantArt account, link to my DeviantArt will be in the About page section. So you guys can go check it out. Also, if you're interested in following my Twitter account, link to my Twitter account will be in the About page section as well. So if you're interested in giving me a follow on there, you're more than welcome to. Also, if you're interested in subscribing to my backup channel known as Miss Dark Shigo, link to that will also be in the About page section so you guys will not miss an upload. And as always, if I'm missing something I did not talk about in this movie, please let me know what it is in the comments below. I'm pretty sure... I have covered everything, but if I'm missing something, please let me know what it is. So, anyways, with that being said, and with that being the case, I will be seeing you guys all in the next video. Peace out, and like always, I will be seeing you all next time.